Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Seiko Starcraft Brock bringing you well, some ladder games, but it's fairly pro. We've got Idra. I'll get into him in a second. Versus Raceland, who I have no idea who it is. Just a replay I caught recently. I thought it was very interesting to look. I'm uh, trying to keep fairly up on the news. Some of you may be aware he joined up with TT Esports. Not necessarily as a top-end pro player. He's still going to be playing a lot of games, and obviously his stream is up and going back in action and getting that good follower base again. But he's really more going into there as a bit of a personality, which is exciting. I know that's the way that he wanted to transition into it. I think he's got a very knowledgeable setup, and I think when he gets into the position where he can just kind of lend that creativity into just playing for fun while casting maybe at a pro level, maybe we're going to be able to see him uh, get a little bit more comfortable, get back out there, and, and help just bring some more energy into the esports scene altogether. Regardless, it is a ZVP. Once again, I have no idea who this guy is. Pretty certain this is the actual Idra that's on the stream there. I know that's the exact same name that he's been using. It could always be Smurfs from other people, but these are two grandmaster players regardless, so we're in for some good action. Now, if I know Idra, okay, I think I know Idra, I'm going to be seeing that expansion, which is still pretty aggressive uh, considering it's up against a Protoss player, but it is a four player map. So you're, I, I haven't been seeing as much cannon rushing lately. Not that I want to see it necessarily, but you want to mix that in every now and then just because it really forces people to, to play safe rather than super, super greedy. On this side, it looks like we're going to be having the gas, just the gateways finishing up. We'll be throwing down that cybernetics core. Might be going for a gateway expand, but it's nice to get that cybernetics core down so you can get up your mothership core. That mothership core keeps you safe against just about anything that can come at you in the early games. Mm. We do have a gas shortly after the pool. We'll see if that's just to be able to get out some lings with some speed here, or you might want to have out the roaches, maybe put on some pressure. Second gas is down before the cybernetic score is even finished. Not a big deal, still standard timings on everything on both sides here. I am drinking a Grasshopper Wheat Ale, which is super tasty. It's one of my favorite beers that uh, I'm not gonna say I grew up with, but uh, easy drinking, high percentage, makes a uh, Canadian boy happy. Looks like we will be having that expansion going down here. I would assume fairly soon for the Protoss player. Quite delayed at this point, so maybe we're gonna actually see a, a four gate or something out of him. Because no scouting has happened for any of the players, it's very difficult to expect Idra to go up to a 3 hatch anytime too soon when he doesn't really know what's coming at him. It'd be too big of an investment, and if he gets caught, it's going to be almost impossible for him to recover. The Mothership Core is going to go down here. There's the Nexus at the 400 Minerals. And maybe we'll see the, uh, maybe even a Stargate or something like that wouldn't surprise me too much at the front. We're seeing that as a pretty standard approach-ish thing. Pylons is part of the wall up. Not a huge fan of, but will help you with these tight little points. And let's see if they'll be able to grab this probe here. The Mothership Core... Getting the probe would have been very worthwhile, but it'd be super, super hard to do that. You can juke a probe pretty good. Just as worthwhile to come in here and get some scouting. Sees a sentry coming out. Nothing too crazy about that, and it runs way off in the middle of nowhere. I'm surprised he probably could have came in here, maybe sniped one pro, but I think Raceland. I keep thinking waistband whenever I see that for some reason. Zap. Now, because the expansion went down for the Protoss, I'm sure that it was more than comfortable to keep macroing up. We see the only tech he's really invested in is getting down that speed. No lair started. And he's actually pulled out completely out of that gas at the exact zero there. So we'll see some more high intensity droning here. That's a little unfortunate for Idra though. He really doesn't have anything in place to deal with this. There will be a time warp and a recall available. So it's not going to do Idra too much good to waste a bunch of units coming over here. Particularly when he doesn't have any. If, this, if he actually keeps this, I would be surprised. Maybe not. 12 lings on the way. This still might end up going down. That's a pretty big investment for Idra to lose that for essentially nothing. No transfuses are ready yet.
A lot of Ling's out now. That's the problem with the the position in which Idra has gone for this year. Uh, these Ling's probably aren't going to get much of anything done on the map right now, so they're just going to be essentially wasted. He'll look for some pylons, but as we can tell, there's nothing out there. And this hatch is very much delayed. He can still keep droning up. I like this move. Taking your macro hatch in, your expansion is good, so if one of your hatches gets sniped, it's never too big of a deal for you to recover from that. Probe's still just running around, looking for stuff, I suppose. It'd be very, very strange to actually see a Zerg player go for a, a hidden base. It's sometimes fun to do that as a Terran player, just because you can get away with it with muling a lot more, but it's a pretty big investment for most other races to hide expansions. And it was not that far behind where I think he has to worry about doing that. Creep spread, rocking and rolling. Roach Warren. Just one Evo chamber, I think, for right now is all I saw. See if that upgrade starts rolling here pretty quick. He doesn't really have that much gas because he just finally took his natural gases. Now he lost all those lings, and that's a little unfortunate. It's a pretty risky move to send out all of your sentries to go do something like that, but if you can pull it off, it's super worthwhile. Those lings, even though they weren't doing too much good for Idra, were keeping him aware of what was going on on the map. Sometimes that can be all you need. Dark Templar follow-up. I like that. I think that could catch Idra very much off guard here. He still is just now producing units. Really, I think he's at that drone level. I'm sure he's fine with No, he's actually still a little bit below where I think he'd want to be with, uh, with a drone count. Now we'll see if we get some DTs warped in here. Just a little scouting phoenix. Does he have plus one finished? He does. I was like, why are those lings getting killed so fast? Well, plus one roaches against zero zero lings. Uh, oh boy. Well, he knows about it. Gets one over here. Oh, well, he made himself a uh, overseer, though, so this shouldn't be too big of a deal. But if we look at the kill count here, 14. I mean, that's obviously not good, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be at this point. Idris should be able to recover from that, but it pretty much evened up the economy pretty good here and allowed the Protoss player to get this third base really easy, completely uncontested. So I'd give our Protoss player quite a bit of a lead, though I'm interested to see what his follow-up from here is. He doesn't really have any other tech. He doesn't have a Robo out. Uh, he's got DTs, yes, but he doesn't have High Templars. Don't know if he got... did he get Blink for... uh, come back. Blink's on the way. Plus three attack is on the way, though. That's going to be pretty sexy. I think these are still all zero, well, zero one. It's not as pathetic. It's a lot of sentries, but there's... Well, there's one immortal in here now, so... That might be what he needs. Run the other way, Idra. Still more units. Roach speed just about finish up. You're so <laughs> This is the real Idra. Um, yeah, I was worried for a second there that maybe I didn't get the right uh, the right guy. That helps confirm it. <laughs> Still nothing but roaches though. Roaches and lings. Lots and lots of force fields. Not a lot of damage dealing in here, right? There's no um, void rays. There's not any colossus. Pretty good force fields, though. They're going to get through those lings pretty fast. The lings are cheaper than the roaches, though. It's this, this plus three, if it finishes up, is going to be so sick. Well, he taxed out almost... Well, no, there's still quite a bit of energy left on these entries here. We still got at least, I think, about six force fields. In my mind, I think it would be better for Idra to just fall back and tech up. 
keep going with this economy and we'll go into the next stage of things, maybe even like a swarm host. There's no Colossus or any other area of effect out here. Swarm host would do really well. This Roach play is just not going to hold up, I think. Just particularly as 3 3 is about to finish. Oh man, Idra. The meat grinder, as we would call it. It's getting some damage in here, but I just don't think it's enough. Supplies are really evening up here. He's on top of the, the Protoss player, but a lot of units not active in this fight. Well, fuck you. Ah. Alright. At least it was Idra, like I said. I'm a little little weirded out that Idra really committed to that play. Terrible position, tons of sentries, immortals out. The complete counter to your attack. Biting your head against that just isn't going to work. Maybe Idra want, needed to like, go take a bath or something like that. I don't see too many reasons for him to have to try to plow through that game so fast. Regardless, Psycho Starcraft, thanks everybody for tuning in and stuff. We'll talk to you later.